we're going to look at the difference between wash and layer. So I want you to pick your favorite color. I'm going to pick blue. And I'm just going to lay down wet on dry. And I'm just going to put it down just like this. And let it be. Now I do want you to label it. So this is wet on dry. Next, I'm bringing just clean water and I'm putting the water down. Now how much water? You can actually lift towards the light and tilting it, you see the glare. Do you see it? So you can actually see how much water is there and you can actually begin to see when it starts drying. So making sure you have that angle where you could see how the water is laying on the paper, just how it's sitting and then bring in your pigment. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it in, tap it on. So this is wet on wet. Notice that I'm not brushing it. I'm just dabbing it, tapping it on. Try not to make a brushing motion at any time. Just dabbing, 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 dabbing. And I'm going to label this wet on wet. So what I want to show you here is this. It's just very simple. As we have a wash, and this is called washes. and layers I'm going to lift a little bit of water I'm actually adding too much water so it takes a little bit longer to dry and that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor you do have to learn how to watch paint dry mm -hmm. if you want to you have to bring a little bit of patience and you have to learn how to watch paint dry if you want to be masterful at it so what I, what we have to do is we have to wait until this wash is 100 percent bone dry fully fully dry and it isn't um and what i want to show you is just very, something very simple we can actually do it on a previous page like the front page here with that same color and this one is fully dry. I could just bring in whether it's wet on wet or wet on dry. And I'm going to do a little bit of wet on dry. More pigment. And I could just do a layer over it. So I'm just going to do a couple of brush strokes. As I layer it on top. Now one amazing way to do this to actually work with layers is to use two different colors. So if I were to layer this blue over another color, you would actually see a little bit of the color underneath. And that is what I want you to, to really get a good, a good grip on, a good sense of how you understand your washes, the combination of washes that you can create, and then how you're going to use those if you're going to add layers to them. So it does not get more complicated than wet on dry, wet on wet. And then if I add a layer on top of these, is that one going to be wet on dry or wet on wet? And what are the possible combinations? Again, infinite. When you look at possibilities of coming over wet on dry wash with a wet on wet layer, you begin to have these unbelievable uh, beautiful, visually appealing. And we're talking, we could use the same color, but if you begin to mix the colors in layers, then it just explodes into the most beautiful, beautiful watercolor creations. Instead of just doing one wash, I'm going to do one more down here. And while I do this one, I'm going to do another wet on wet, and I'm going to use... Uh, let's say red. 
So this is just a nice, beautiful, wet-on-wet -wet wash with the Lizarin Crimson Red. And with that same color, Lizarin Crimson, I'm going to create a little bit more con deeper consistency, more pigment than water, wet on dry. So it's a little more saturated. And just brush that on. Now there's a there's a thing a lot of watercolor artists use, which is a hair dryer or blow dryer to actually speed up the drying process. And before you lay down a wash, I'm sorry, a layer over a wash, the one thing that is very, very important is that you make sure it is absolutely dry. So this one is dry enough. And just because we need to move on, you could just watch and then do it later. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a wet on dry layer over it. And I want to do one of a different color. So I'm going to take some yellow. And I'm going to do a little bit of a, once again, wet on dry, right over it. Oh, look at that. So the way it mixes, it's not actually mixing the way we mix colors. And the drier your washes are, the more you can manipulate the transparency, the glazing, and the look of these layers. This was wet on wet. You could see the difference, hopefully, from a flat wash of wet on dry, and this one that's wet on wet. So now it's fully dry. But I could still do a wet on wet layer. How? Water. Lay it down very carefully without rubbing too hard. I lay it down right on top of it and then bring my pigment and it does the wet on wet. So you can create wet on wet, wet on dry layers. The only thing you need to manage is the level of moisture, the wetness or dryness of your washes. And when you begin to combine those with layers, magic. We have a wash here with, this was supposed to be wet on wet. And that's why I label them right away because now they look so similar. Uh, and it's, it is the type of pigment. Sometimes you can't, you can't tell the difference. And that's because it was too wet. So for this one, I'm going to use the same pigment. But I'm going to use actually a blue. And I love the way this washes over. And I'm going to use a layer of wet on dry right over the whole thing. I'm just going out of the borders so you could see the blue. But can you see that nice, glassy, transparent look of beginning to be violet? So the more layers, can I add two, three, four layers? At some point, you'll begin covering the previous wash and you'll lose a lot of it. So as long as you stay lighter on your layers, the more that color that you laid down uh, early on is going to show. So I'm going to try to showcase that here. I'm going to make this a little bit more consistent. So I'm going for coffee, coffee milk, and I'm just going to dab it on. And just make kind of little patterns. And that's the same color. It was a little more deeper in consistency, but it's still a layer. 